rock stars. I love this. Nice. Well, yeah, if anybody is watching, you can, of course, continue to watch right now and uh, give this a like or say hello, get a comment. Uh, also, this is going to be available on iTunes or SoundCloud or anywhere else that you might get your podcasts from on the Live Different Podcast. But I am excited to introduce my guest today, Ryan Paw. Ryan is the co-founder of the Young Entrepreneur Council, and he's got a new book out. And the book is called Super Connector. Stop networking and start building relationship, business relationships that matter. There it is. Ooh, there's the book right now. Ryan, we've gone back uh, for a long time. I knew you originally when you were working at one of the top social networks for young people, Brazen Careerist. And uh, that was a while ago. Yeah, I think at least 10 years. Um, yeah, I mean, Brazen isn't even around in, anymore, but um, it's what led to YEC and, and all this other great stuff. So uh, that was really like my first um, dive into becoming a community builder, and it kind of paved the way for everything I'm doing now. So I'm so thankful for the time I had there. Yeah, you, you got it. Will you, will you talk about the YEC real quick just so everybody mm – -hmm knows what it is that you do uh, here for a living? Yeah, so YEC, which stands for Young Entrepreneur Council, is an invite-only organization of top young entrepreneurs from around North America, some from around the globe. Um, you know, all of them are making at least a million in revenue per year from their ventures. And it's an amazing, diverse group of people. You know, it's not like joining a group for agency owners or a group for people in fintech or some other just industry specific group. This is like a, a mind share of people that are at the top of their game in all industries. And it's been a magical community to be a part of. We've seen some amazing business relationships form, amazing friendships. Uh, we provide our members with access to uh, each other, relationship building opportunities online and off. We provide them with access to uh, branding and media opportunities. We help them become thought leaders online. Uh, and we provide them access to other services to help their businesses grow that we've accumulated through building this community over the years. So uh, it's a special thing to be a part of. That's, that's excellent. I've known you and your, your co-founder, Scott Gerber, for a long time, back from our under 30 CEO days. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we've been sharing content and uh, constantly trying to figure out ways to help each other out. And I think that that's a big part in a uh, big part about what your new book, your book has been out for what, three days? Uh, I, my apologies. I yeah. downloaded it on Kindle, but I have not had the chance to read it because it's been out for like, I don't know, it just came out, three, right? Three days. Yeah. March 27th. Okay. Tuesday was the big day. And um, the reception from friends and family and uh, new people that I'm meeting online that have read it, it's just been great. Like people have sped through the reading the book because they couldn't put it down and it was an easy read and um you know the text messages keep coming in from people i gave uh advanced copies to and what i really love is that um it's resonating with people that have hated networking hated the process of just doling out business cards at events and going to these just nasty bars and then coming home just feeling like buzzed and not satisfied about the people who you spent that time with um, and they didn't know that there was another way. Uh, I've had friends ask me about how to network better for years. And it's, it's not an easy thing to give, you know, a couple seconds of advice on. It's like a very complicated subject. And I think this book is resonating well with people like that. And what's, what's great about that is, you know, for a lot of the people that are watching now, these are our people. We're community builders. And some of this is just like preaching to the choir. But we all know at least one person who's just a great you know, person, someone who's capable of amazing things, but they're just sort of trapped in this old way of transactional networking, thinking that it's all one sided, worried about quantity over quality. And, and I think that's who I want this book to get in the hands of. Um, so if each and every one of us is thinking, no, duh, Ryan, this is like stuff we all know. Well, yeah, we do. But there are other people in our network, the other 99.9% .9 that don't know this stuff. And I'm excited to be able to push this into their hands and hopefully 
you know, help them become great community builders and great relationship builders that we've all become through the relationships that we've formed with each other. Absolutely. And you've created a handbook now that the people listening can take and share this with their teams, with their own communities, with their friends, with their families. Uh, there's some pretty awesome people watching. And that's why the biggest, you know, I've, I've done over 100 podcast episodes. I've been doing it for two and a half years. We have over 100,000 downloads on it. But it's kind of, you know, when you're just talking to another person over the phone or over Skype, you record it, you put it out. And yeah, I get, I get a lot of emails about it, but it's not a, the community feel. And that's what you do so well. So that's why I was excited to share this on Facebook. Um, I, I will, again, shout out the community because we have some people who I haven't seen in a really long time. There's a guy named Wayan watching right now who is a... Uh, tour guide in Bali, Indonesia. I hiked a volcano with him. We have uh, Jonathan Cruz, who was a former under 30 experiences trip leader. We got Bob Khaleesi, who I went to school with, and he worked for the Young Entrepreneur Council. He's saying, uh, love that this is happening to my favorite people. We got Luis, uh, gives us saludos from Costa Rica. Uh, Jason Heller is watching. Uh, my aunt, got, my aunt then, Denise, Denise yes. Reed Brower. Hey, Anthony. Excellent. Glad we got a couple people, a couple of your fan, fans, it looks like. We got a Julio and a Jason. Do you see those comments? Mm -hmm. Good to see you guys. This is awesome. Pretty cool. Uh, so, all right, Ryan, if you are, let's break it down uh, top level. And you, okay, you said something very interesting. You said people go to these networking events and they go to these kind of dirty bars and they leave feeling a little bit buzzed, unsatisfied, and like they didn't meet the right people. Sounds a little bit like dating. What, what, are, you, <laughs> what are you looking for out there, Ryan? I mean, look, it's, I did not, you know, I was not on the dating scene when, you know, it became like this online dating phenomenon that it is now. Um, and, but I did spend a lot of time out at the bars in college trying to meet girls and, and trying to, you know, create those types of relationships. And you know what? It's very similar, right? Like you spend a lot of time talking to a lot of different people, you know, you're, you're kind of talking to them, but you're kind of looking over their shoulder, looking at the next person that's waiting to talk to you. You know, you got the noise going on in the background and content and music and, and whatnot. And you just really can't meet great people. Um, and what I found is um, when I kind of changed my tune a little bit and started going out once I was in the business world, uh, meeting people, I found that spending time talking to just one person at an event, one person for a longer period of time versus trying to, you know, just throw out business cards to everyone before you leave the bar. Um, you get a lot more out of that experience. You get a relationship, you get potentially a friendship, someone that's going to probably send you business uh, because they've gotten to know you so well versus just kind of peripherally getting to know someone and then moving on. Um, those types of events, those types of networking experiences just do not work. And um, again, that's just sort of like, you know, the, the foundation of what Super Connector is all about, getting people out of that element and helping them find a way to build relationships where they can thrive. Okay. So if people are out looking for jobs or to do business development, or uh, maybe you're looking for a mentor or there's, I mean, there's, or, or just friends in general in people in your industry, people not in your industry that you can learn from, uh, you know, most people look at this networking as a transactional, what am I going to get out of this? Uh, mm -hmm. And it seems through Super Connector that you're not looking at it as a transaction whatsoever. You're looking at it as, all right, more of you flipped it on your head as how can I help this person and how mm -hmm. will, and, and you don't even really think that much about how is this, what am I going to get out of this? Is, is that right? Yeah. In the book, we talk about a concept which we call habitual generosity, which really is making sure that giving to other people becomes just a daily, daily routine part of what you do as a person. Um, great community builders, great connectors know that if you give to other people unconditionally without accepting anything in return, 
you eventually get more bounty out of that action tenfold later on. You know, really like going into these relationships with just the idea that you're going to be good at supporting them and, and making sure that they are the focal point will eventually lead back to, uh, you know, some form of profit for yourself. No, I, I completely agree. And I mean, look, you're a pro at this and I will be happy to say that uh, I was very impressed when I read the inside cover of the book and saw that there was a foreword by a legendary author, Keith Ferrazzi, right? He's the author mm -hmm. of Never Eat Alone. Uh, and then reviews of the book by the CEO of Forbes, Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank, the executive editor of Inc.com. How did you pull this off? Just going back to what we just talked about, man, it's about giving to other people. It's about providing opportunities for others. And each and every one of those people that you just mentioned are people that we have made an effort consciously to give to for years and years and years. Um, and not just to them, but the people around them, the people that are in what we call their pyramid of influence, the folks that help you know, make Barbara Corcoran's day run, you know, helping them, supporting them. Um, this is not something that happens overnight. Um, this is years and years of relationship building and goodwill um, that we've put out into the world. And now that we had this opportunity to make a big ask, um, we had felt that we had built up another enough, um, you know, just, currency through the the generosity that we have given to take a risk and and make that ask and, and make it clear hey we know this is a big thing to put your name on our book but we would love for you to do it and it's amazing when you give before you you know just ask for something straight out of the blue how willing people are to help you it was just straight out yeses across the board because we really had been building those relationships for many many years and constantly giving to those folks, knowing that one day there would probably be a, a return on that investment to come back to us. Cool. Well, I, okay. I want to get back to this concept of habitual generosity in a second, but if you don't mind me asking, let's take, let's dig into a specific example here. And mm -hmm. if you don't mind talking more about your relationship with Barbara Corcoran, that's, it'll be fun because people, people know her from TV. She's a big, mm -hmm. you know, she's on Shark Tank, New York City, real estate person. So yeah. how did you originally get connected? And then how can you like, oh, I'm, I'm little old Matt Wilson. How can I uh, add any value to someone as big and powerful as TV star Barbara Corcoran? Tell me that. <laughs> so it's really a Scott relationship, that one. So I can't go into too many details, but that... Um relationship started through um, Scott doing the Fountain Forum series with Inc. And, and that was what, you know, got us in touch with uh, Barbara Corcoran and um, got her to sit down and, and to do an interview with Scott and for them to get to know each other on a more personal level. And for us to get to know, again, the people in the pyramid of influence that surround her, right? Because most of the time getting to someone at the very top is not very easy. But if you go a couple rungs down the ladder, and invest in those people and, you know, continue to cultivate that relationship, you're probably going to have a lot more of an opportunity to um, get ROI from that as well. And in the book, like, and actually in another AMA that I did a couple of days ago, people were asking me this exact question. You know, I want to up my networking game. I want to um, start building relationships with like, the elite like Lewis Howes um, because this was someone in sort of like the, the marketing space and they were, they were really infatuated with Lewis. Who's another guy in our book. And what I said to them was, well, yeah, maybe one day Lewis will be, you know, one of your, your good friends and in that inner circle, but you know what? A better place to start is with the people that Lewis surrounds himself with. I'm sure he has an assistant. I'm sure he has production people that are helping him with all the media that he's producing why don't you start there? Start with someone that's more on your playing field. Start building a relationship with them. Start supporting them uh, in meaningful ways. And eventually you may have an opportunity to, who knows, sit at a intimate dinner that one of these people are having at you know, their house. And that sort of like 
rock star person that you might want to meet could be sitting across from you. That's the kind of tactics that we talk about uh, in the book that actually work and, and is typically what's happening behind the scenes. You don't just reach out to the rock star CEO of whatever company it is that you're interested in this week. You, you work your way up to that level by getting connected with the people that are actually in the day to day making that engine run. Um, and that's really important. You know, in our book, we have um, one of my favorite authors and one of my favorite people, uh, John Rulin, who is the author of a book called Giftology, a book all about being a better gift giver. And one of the things that he talks about in the book is um, how he goes out of his way to provide gifts, not just for the person that he's trying to say thank you to or that he's trying to build a relationship with, but to their significant other or their spouse or their assistant. Because if you can make those people happy, um, a natural side effect of that is the individual that you're trying to build a relationship being happy to. That, that makes a lot of sense. And, uh, you know, I almost got in a street ball flight, fight one time with Lewis Howes. So we haven't seen each other <laughs> since. So maybe I should bring him on the podcast <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and we can make up. <laughs> it, like was, it wasn't the best start to our relationship, I don't think. <laughs> but that's uh, a great story, right? I mean, you know, it is actually like a great way to break the ice if you were to reach back out. Um, I, I might have to. I might have to do so. And, and I just wanted to know if anybody's watching and wants to ask questions, please do. We want to make this as interactive as as possible. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Okay, so somebody's trying to reach someone who they admire, right? What do you have any uh, advice on that? Again, I, I, I go, go to the people around them first. Um, and there's cool. very easy ways to figure out who those people are. I mean, it's easier than ever to um, see who's in someone's uh, pyramid of influence just by seeing who works at their company. Um, sure. And, and LinkedIn, yeah. would you suggest yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. LinkedIn, um, you know, just going to uh, people's blogs and reading about the, who, who they write about. Naturally, the most uh, authentic people write about people that they genuinely care about, you know, and, and that and that comes up. Um, follow them, you know, on Twitter, follow them on Facebook, figure out where their stage is and become sort of uh, an avid, a avid um you know, viewer of whatever that show is that they're putting together online for you, learn all about them, become an expert. And, you know, through that, I think you'll discover really quickly, quickly who's important to them in their life. So an example would be like, for me, if you wanted to go get to know me better, but you couldn't contact me directly, you should go find Kiri, my assistant who basically runs my life. And I don't know what I would do if she, you know, left me tomorrow. She's that indispensable and figure out how to make her incredibly happy and do something nice for her. And inevitably she will probably help you get to me. Um, same thing with my wife, right? If you can make my wife's day or, uh, you know, better come watch my kids for an hour. I don't know. Like if you can really impress her, you know, you're going to get, you know, my attention too. Cause these are the people in my life that matter. And when they're happy, I'm happy. Just don't be creepy, everybody out there watching. That's all yeah, we ask. Don't, don't show up at my house, you know, unannounced, asking to take my kids. I mean, as enticing as that might be for me, you know, that might freak my wife out a little bit. But you get the idea. You know, just find ways totally. to make people happy. Create those surprise and delight moments. Um, and again, just don't focus on the person. Focus on the people around them. I think you'll have a lot more success that way. Totally. Uh, so, so this concept of being a super connector, I want to go back to because, uh, for example, uh, yesterday we had a new manager start in our Central American region. She's here in Costa Rica. We went out for lunch. I was wel welcoming her to the team and someone walked in that was a very good person to know in the community. Someone who knows mm -hmm. everybody, someone who literally is a super connector and that person walked in and I, I flagged the person down and I said, Hey, you got to meet our, our new manager here. And they got to talking and, and it was going well. And after I said, Hey, look, that's one of the most important people to know uh, here in town because you know, she knows everybody. She's been here for a long time. She's very well connected. And that person is a super connector and is very willing 
to help other people and give that out. And she has then positioned herself as that member of the community who people go to. And so now some people might say, oh, I don't want to be a super connector because people are going to be hitting me up for introductions and contacts and using my Rolodex. And uh, I, got, I want to guard my contacts, right? Like that's a very old school way uh -huh. to think about things what would you say to someone who's like oh my god my, my well these are very important people who i know i can't tell anyone about them so the good news is if you are someone who is just doling out introductions all day haphazardly to people because they ask you for them you're not a super connector you have a lot to learn about building relationships and making great connections between people um, a great connector, not even a super connector, knows that you don't just make introductions because someone asks you for them. Uh, you're, you're very conscious about your network and the people around you and their time. You know, the one thing that is all, for all of us, a finite resource. Um, super connectors are not afraid to say no. Super connectors probably say no more than they say yes um, because they know that one bad introduction that they didn't really think through could break down years and years of built up trust with someone who's very important to you. So at the end of the day, um, if you're to become a great connector, perhaps a super connector, you're going to have to learn how to better distill whether or not a connection should be made in the first place and help people steer themselves in the right direction towards perhaps a better connection that's going to help them solve a problem or to decide whether or not, you know, the people that are coming to you are people you want to help in general, because frankly, like it sucks, but there are people in the world that, um, you know, trouble just follows them and they're not the type of people that you want to associate with, uh, being a connector, uh, being a great community builder, uh, being a generous person does not trump the fact that like there are certain rules to the game and you always have to be thinking about yourself and ensuring that, you know, through the connections that you make and the generosity that you provide to other people that you're not putting yourself at risk. No, I think that's a great point. Uh, one of the big focuses that I have made over the last couple of years is trying to say no more and how to set proper boundaries with people because I don't want everybody on the street asking me for, for this or for that or, or just asking me for a lot of things because time is our most finite resource. And I really want to make sure the opportunities that come my way are the, the opportunities that are, are of the most quality. So uh, my question for you, Ryan, is two-part question. How do you say no and how do you set good, strong boundaries? Sure. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm, I'm so easy to connect with online. I'm very accessible. Um, I always try to email everyone back. And that's just like my, my personal like code of ethics for my life right now. I want people to feel like if they have taken the time to reach out to me that I get back to them with at least some response. Um, so I'm very easy to connect with. From there, you know, how you present yourself and what, you know, you're providing me information wise is going to really determine whether or not I say no or yes. Uh, how I decide whether or not to say no or yes is very much tied to what someone tells me or more importantly, what they don't tell me. So for example, um, I had a guy reach out to me the other day, um, a student at Penn state, uh, which is my alma mater. And I'm always looking to help entrepreneurs over there. They know I'm very accessible. Um, you know, he sent me an idea, said he wanted to talk, wouldn't give me anything else about it. I think he wanted me to sign an NDA before I even got on the phone call. These are all red flags for me. This is stuff that I'm not going to do. Like if you need help, um, if you, if you need someone's help, you better make it easy for them to help you. You better give them all the information. You better explain exactly what kind of support you need. You better understand your challenges, um, and how you think that person can actually support you. So they don't feel like Uh oh, Ryan has been frozen. Ryan, I hope you're still there. You were making a pretty good point. 
let's see if he comes back. I am going to uh, shout out a couple people who've made some very intelligent. We've got uh, Scott Pontywentz, who is watching, which is really cool. We have uh, Jose coming in, Brandon Dobro, who, I, wa who uh, I went to school with, was our marketing director for the Bryant University Collegiate Entrepreneurs Organization, Tara Elizabeth. We got Eric Christian, former producer of the show. Patrick O'Keefe says, uh, regarding making a big ask, I found that a lot of people really doubt themselves and are nervous to come uh, to ask someone big and powerful to do something, whether it's write a forward for a book, be on a podcast, but as he sums up, the worst that they can do is say no, right? So uh, don't feel like you have that imposter uh, syndrome, is, he says, after giving, uh, giving and giving uh, unconditionally for so long, what would you say to help them get over it? Okay, that's a great question. We're going to try to get Ryan back here. He says, patch me back in, and uh, we'll go right on with this next question. This is... This is hey. pretty flawless. Ryan, what's up, man? Hey, so... The, so the... apparently when someone calls you while you're on a uh, Facebook live chat, it just screws everything up. We're learning something. Way every... to go, Facebook. Thanks for making <laughs> this easy. <laughs> you, you, got, you got it. Hey, man, I'm, I'm glad you're back. Uh, we had a question from, from Patrick O'Keefe, and uh, yeah, he was saying... Patrick's if... one of our community directors at the community company. So, hey, Patrick. Excellent. Excellent. His question is, if someone is feeling fear about reaching out to someone mm. that's uh, big and powerful, as I said, right? Uh, how could you help that person get over their imposture, uh, imposter syndrome? Mm. Think really hard about what gets you psyched up. Play some loud music, put some prodigy on, just really get psyched and then start writing the email and then just press send. I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, like you really just have to like bite the bullet and do it. You know, I think like be prepared, really think through going back to what we were talking about before I got cut off. Um, you need to really like make sure that you're presenting what you need help with in the best way possible. You know, don't just reach out to someone and say, I have this idea. Can we get on a call? Well, no, because I don't know what your idea is. I don't know if I can help you. Um, give me more so I know whether or not this is worth my time. Be thoughtful. Be, be human. Show that you've done some research and, you know, went out on the web and learned something about the other person that is important to them. What, is, what, is, what really drives them in life? get to know them so they don't feel like you're just another person on a listserv that you're sending out to on a given day to try to reach out to people that might give you money. Like be a, be yourself, be human, psych yourself up for it. If you're feeling scared and um, you really got nothing to lose after that. The worst that someone can say is no. Most people I think genuinely want to help other people, but we don't make it easy for them to do so because we don't set them up for success in helping us because we don't give them enough information and we don't think thoughtfully enough about um, whether or not they're the right person to help us to begin with. Yeah, I, I like the answer. Think highly of yourself. I think that's great. And uh, keep the questions coming. Russell Ryan, Comer sure. loves Prodigy too. So yeah, I, yes. knew, I knew you'd like that, Russ. I know you love Prodigy. That's why I Damn. said it. Damn, Russ Comer is here. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. I was just going to make a Prodigy prodigy joke and uh <laughs> so we'll link that up in the show mo show notes ryan's favorite pump up music and it, apparently yc member russell comers as well what's up russell thanks for thanks for coming in we have uh uh hila is is coming from europe uh lori butler says ryan that she hears you are an awesome boss uh we uh, have Rose. that must be uh amanda's mom hi lori nice nice to nice. meet you we have uh, we have a mom of one of our employees on here. Rose is coming in. Uh, Jen De Simone's mom, Dan Savage, is watching. Scott Pinewatts asks. This is a great are, question. I'm so right, glad we're getting to this question. Favorite questions to ask someone to best understand how you can potentially help them if they may not even know. Yes. So to start things off. 
I'll share what is like my least favorite question. This is actually a question that we ban people from saying if you're uh, a community manager at the community company, you're not allowed to ask people, how can I help you? It's the worst question. Um, most people that you talk to are not prepared to answer that question for a lot of reasons. One, they might not know that they need help to begin with. Uh, the other reason is they have no freaking clue in most cases how you can help them. So you're just asking them to maybe ramble something off or to say they'll get back to you where there's a better way to position um, a question that will actually get really great information and will put the ball into your court to decide how exactly you can help them, right? Because if you're a great connector, you can collect information for what someone else is telling you and, and know pretty easily what resource, what, what person, what a good deed can you do to make that person uh, more successful at what they're trying to accomplish? So my favorite question to ask and one that I always um, try to have our team keep in their playbook is what are you working on right now that is exciting for you? Pretty much anyone in any of the networks that we've created at the community company is prepared to answer that question because they're all ambitious. They're all working hard and they they all have something right now that's going on that, um, is a big part of their life. And they're really excited to talk about it in most cases. Um, so if you can set up questions like that, that just get people talking off the cuff about what they're working on. And if on the other end, you're a really great connector and a really great listener, you're gonna be able to determine how you can help them. But again, it's all about framing the right question to begin with. You gotta get people talking. Um, you gotta get people opening up to you. Um, through asking a question that they all can universally answer. And again, in our case, we're working with ambitious people, whether it's YEC or members of the Forbes Council or other groups that we're creating. One of the commonalities are these are all hardworking, ambitious folks, and they all have something that they're working on right now that they're willing to share. Many of them are actually overshare, and that's awesome too, because we get a lot of data, a lot of really good information that helps us uh, then go back and put the puzzle pieces together, which we love doing as community builders, and then come back with some resources and opportunities that we think can help them. Ryan, I, I like that quite a bit. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's, that's just an excellent way to, yeah, an excellent way to think about it. And that how I can help you is very open-ended. But one okay. of the biggest things that you, you know, you're talking about capturing data from who you're, who is in your community. And if you want to do that, the best way is to get someone talking. It's also mm -hmm. one of the very top negotiation strategies. If you are thinking, if you're in a negotiation, right, you're trying to think, how can I help this person? What value can I provide so that uh, we can come to an agreement here? So if you get that, that person talking and you just listen that's so important. So having certain prompts to learn what you can learn, and then you can have the, a big body of knowledge and dissect what, like you said, puzzle pieces you can take out to then be able to use as bargaining chips, you, be able to use as negotiation uh, tactics. So I think that's, that's excellent. Yeah. It comes back to listening what you said. Do you have any other uh, tips on how people can be better listeners because community wise you know the the old school gary vanerchuk advice is to listen if you ha if you are if you have a product or a service <laughs> listen to what the people have to say how can you be yeah. a better listener it's, it's funny advice coming from someone who like pretty much never shuts up and and I, and I love gary but like at the end of the day uh props to my introverts right people like me who are more behind the scenes and do not thrive at big networking events and are not, you know, showing off our best selves when we're on center stage, because those are the people that you need to learn from. Introverts are the best listeners because they are oftentimes in the peripheral of conversations, just extracting information from folks and learning how they can assist. So, um, find your best introvert friend and learn from them. And if you're already an introvert, my guess is whether you know it or not, you already have that skill uh, ingrained inside you. So just embrace it and know that introverts are some of my favorite connectors. Uh, through doing this book and showcasing dozens of them, 
some of the ones that I've just learned the most from and, and are the most inspiring to me are not the ones on center stage. So uh, this is not, you know, the kind of thing, being a connector, being a super connector, that is just um, something that the most extrovert people are destined to obtain. I think some of the introverts out there have a leg up in a lot of ways. So don't discount yourself and know that you are primed to be a great connector in whatever communities that you're a part of. Um, so embrace it and, and be proud of that. Ryan, if someone like myself, I actually, I've become more introverted in my, at my old age of 32 years old. Uh, I, I don't feel like I need to be out and about and in front of people all the time anymore. But there are some people out there who I can relate with who might not understand introverts and mm -hmm. might not might not get what's going on in there and why are they quiet? If there's anybody yeah. else out there trying to understand an introvert friend of theirs, I haven't read that book called The Quiet. <laughs> I probably should. Yes, what do you got for Susan's it? book is awesome. You have to read it. Um, she is one of the people that I was the most excited to talk about. And there actually is some really great advice from Susan and Super Connector as well. Um, it's funny, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm like the unicorn right now for you, like trying to understand what I'm all about. Uh, and this happened um, a couple of weeks ago when uh, Jason Gagnard, another friend of ours, uh, interviewed us for his Community Made podcast. They were just trying to like sort of pry into me and ask, how do I understand you? And it's a hard thing to, to give you an answer to. Like, I don't know. I, I think like, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're just people like everyone else. We're just quieter. You know, we're not, you know, we have the same goals that we have the same desires, you know, we want stability. And, and I think like, you know, to learn from us, just like be more understanding of the fact that we're not that different. We just don't thrive in the same spaces. You know, I think while uh, extroverts, you know, get a lot of energy and, and, and feel very excited and, and refreshed by big crowds and lots of people, introverts just don't. And, and you know, be understanding that if someone sort of like doesn't attend your big networking event or, you know, isn't the most talkative because they just need some time apart, you know, it's not you. It's just, that's the way that we are. You know, it's just all about being more compassionate towards other people and understanding that uh, even though we have differences, we, you know, we all pretty much want the same things. That's cool. Oh, I, uh, I understand introverts just a little bit better and i do want to i will link up uh quiet in the quiet. show notes it that's, will be that is the advice read that book you know because that's the person who has put the most time into answering that question great well that will be in uh the itunes show notes on the live different podcast and under 30 experiences.com slash blog uh, for anybody looking for those and those links uh, this episode will be a uh, out uh, in about a week. But Ryan, I wanted to ask you how people can systematize their uh, super connecting or we, we've stopped use the, using the word networking because you've, uh, you've shunned it now. But how can people systematize this in their life? Because people are busy. And sure, it's easy to go to happy hour at 530 after work and go and network and and you can call that your, your time to try to build your professional relationships or your personal mm -hmm. relationships, whatever you're looking to. But there's got to be, for, for very successful people, people who are very good at this, there has to be a better uh, system where, all right, you want to go and uh, give gifts to people or, you know, those people who never miss your birthday and you're like, how do they do that? <laughs> or... Uh, uh, what's another what's another good example somebody who just seems to always touch me okay jordan harbinger i don't know if you know jordan uh previously from the art of charm podcast but uh jordan harbinger show really good show and it's he the man is a machine as far as mm -hmm. knowing people always being reaching out dropping comments on your facebook on your instagram and it's all him and he has like four or five million monthly podcast listeners i'm like man how do you keep up with the thousand people that you've interviewed Be but i know he's just a mm -hmm. a freak but it's all systematized so what does your system look like when it comes to uh 
practicing being a super connector? I mean, um, first and foremost, all of this, you know, before you can build systems for yourself and get into some of the like more practical stuff that's going to help you stay organized is knowing who you are and figuring out uh, where you thrive, right? We all need to have a lot of self-awareness, you know, little known fact, but um, being a great connector doesn't start with understanding other people. It starts with understanding yourself. And I think that that's the most important thing, right? Because I just heard you talk about uh, Jordan, I believe, who has hundreds of thousands of people that he's connecting with on any given day. And I had like a mini panic attack. Like I won't, I will never do that. I won't do it. That's not going to work for me. Um, but it works for Jordan and that's great. And it sounds like he's very successful at what he does because of it. Um, and he probably has amazing systems behind the scenes that help him do it. Uh, me, I'm more concerned about a smaller group of people, uh, because I believe that, um, the most successful people out there have become the most successful because of a small intimate group of individuals that are looking out for one another. Um, and I think that's where, I think that's where the real bounty can be made, making larger sums of time investments in a smaller group of people. Um, that to me is where I thrive. Now, there's some great people to learn from out there that'll give you more practical tips that may or may not work for you. Uh, Steve Sims, who is like the guy who has the best job in the world, just go Google him and you'll see what I'm talking about. You know, whenever he meets someone at his... Um, at his events and, and different trade shows that he goes to, he takes down like just really random notes on, on things that they talked about, you know, like just stuff that they were working on, very interesting travel plans that they might have had so that next time when they come across each other, he can look them up and say, hey, how was that trip to Toledo, Ohio to see your sick aunt? You know, like something very specific that'll make him more of a thoughtful individual and, and show that, like he genuinely cares about the relationships that he's forming with people, even if they're very, you know, short conversations. Uh, Michael Roderick, uh, another person you should Google, uh, has a great podcast you should listen to. Um, literally is probably like the godfather of the spreadsheet. Like I think he invented Google Sheets and he just like puts everything in a Google spreadsheet. He's got this very like crazy formula that I can't even begin to tell you about. You just got to kind of see it for yourself, but that's his way of keeping track of his connections. And it's just like this immense Google sheet database of all his people and a plethora of data points that help him stay connected and understand who they are so that every time that they meet, he can continue to add to the conversation, continue to provide value and continue to follow up. So to each their own, right? I think the most important thing for anyone who picks up this book uh, is that this is not written to be gospel, right? It was written to be a collection of ideas, um, a showcase of super connectors that we admire, and a, a, a way to get inspired to make a change in your life. If you feel like you are somehow squandering your relationships, if you feel like you are not getting enough out of um, the events, the networking events that you are attending, um, if you're sick of carrying around pockets full of business cards, there's something in this book that will help you think differently and will help you become better at building relationships because people will always be our most important asset in life. And we owe it to ourselves, no matter what our trade and no matter what the hard skill that we have is to get better at cultivating those relationships and maintaining them over the years. Well, Ryan, I really like how you talked about having a small group of people who look out for themselves and cultivating that and not worrying about every, you know, every single business card you ever got and writing something on the back and remembering that. And, and if that might work for, for whoever you just listed and, and, you know, Keith Ferrazzi who wrote the forward for your book, I love how he talks about, he keeps spreadsheets and when he goes into a new city, well then he has a list of people in Seattle or in Chicago mm -hmm. or in Miami or wherever that he can go and, and catch up with, which uh, is pretty neat, but that's what works for him. So mm -hmm. I, I appreciate yeah. that. 
Ryan, it sounds like there's a, a small group of people here interested in your couch for sale on Craigslist. Is yeah, that, what the hell is happening? What, Steven, know. Emily, Lindsay, who are you? And what, what I, I do actually have a couch I'm trying to get rid of, so we could talk about it later. It's an we IKEA can auction original. It off. It's that in my sounds... basement. We could, we could just take it to the highest bidder. So we could use the rest of this time to do that, or you know, maybe you guys just popped into the wrong uh, Facebook Live. But it's pretty funny. <laughs> stick stick around on Facebook Live where we'll be auctioning off Ryan Paw's <laughs> IKEA couch. an original uh, Ryan Paw IKEA couch available. That's uh, that's that sounds amazing. Um, all right, Ryan, uh, we don't have a ton of time left, but I do want to ask you about self awareness because mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. Uh, trying to understand other people is one thing, but understanding yourself it, it goes back to dating if if you are trying to understand like oh, I don't understand these people uh, that I'm trying to get with or what or whatever but most people don't even understand themselves so i'm sure it has a lot to do with being a better networker or building better relationships uh so what uh yeah what do you think you gotta ask yourself some good questions get out bob Calise just sent me a text i don't know what he's saying he said i want to make sure you saw this i think he's talking about the guy that just said um that he doesn't want me to cuss on his facebook live glenmore what the fuck are you talking about i'm not cussing so just chill out um so ask yourself questions get out a pen and paper there's some good ones in a super connector book um some of the ones that i really like um you know where do you get very uncomfortable? What, what situations make you panic? Um, what situations have you been in in the last you know, couple months that have really excited you? Write that stuff down. Um, what type of people really turn you off? What are the type of people that you gravitate towards? Um, <laughs> Glenn Moore said, I'm incredibly offensive. I, I, this is the guy that I'm going to be like Facebook stalking later because I want to know who he is. Um, but anyway, like, Ask yourself some really difficult questions. Ask yourself things that are, um, you know, hard to answer. Where, where do you feel like you thrive? Where do you feel like you suck? And, and from there, you know, put yourself in more of the situations where you know you thrive or the things that make you incredible. <laughs> Glenmore is totally <laughs> cracking me up. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the Live Different podcast, this is, uh, someone this, is asking <laughs> if this is an online transgender wedding. I yeah, think people Matt Wilson and I place. are actually getting married right now, and Bob this Felici is, amazing. is officiating. But uh, Glenmore, we're glad you showed up. Leave your gift um, at the table in the back, and um, we will connect later. And maybe Matt will work out a, a time for you to come on the show because I am like so intrigued by whoever you are. Um, <laughs> um, look. If you want to be great at being a super connector or great at anything in your life, you got to know where you thrive and where you suck. So ask yourself those questions and make sure that you get more of those places that you thrive in your life and less of the ones that suck. Only, you know, invest your time, that finite resources into being a part of things that really bring out the best in you. And there's a lot of questions you can ask, you know, to help you do that. Um, I've got a really great friend, a guy that I just did a podcast with, with, and he's in the book. His name's Darius Farrell. He talks a lot about self-awareness more eloquent, more eloquently than I can with Glenn Moore distracting me with his comments. Um, I would check out his website, check out his podcast and listen to what he has to say, because in writing this book, I was interested in, in exploring how I could become more self-aware. And he was a big resource and mentor for me in that. That, that, that is fantastic advice. Uh, we can shout, a, shout out a few more people who are watching here live and I'll ask you a final question. And then uh, things are getting out of hand here. We've got uh, Topher coming in, a uh, former Jeff. buddy of mine from, from New York City. We'll skip over Glenmore's comments. Uh, Bill <laughs> Cheswick is watching. We've got uh, Brian Burke Green coming in, uh, Diane Byrne. Russell Comer's got our back in the comments. Thank you, Russell. Uh, 
We got Heather Gee, Kelsey Evanson from one of our Under 30 Experiences yoga retreats and a uh, longtime Lived in Her podcast listener. So, and uh, Sandra, is, Sandra, I think a friend of yours is saying hi to you, Ryan. Hey, Sandra. I'm, I'm losing it right now. This is the most fun I've had all day. Thanks to Glenn Moore and Robert Calise pronouncing us man and super connector. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> so Ryan and I just got married on Facebook Live, <laughs> apparently. Uh, so to try to get one <laughs> last. Yes, go ahead, Ryan. What do you got? I was just going to add. Uh, forget it. I, it was a stupid thing. <laughs> it, it's it's Just... all good. Let, we're going to drive this point home and then we're going to crack up, I'm sure. Uh, once we, we get done with the recording, look, it sounds like we have an amazing community out there listening, including <laughs> people who are interested in your couch. In and, my couch. Uh, our friend, Glenn Moore. Everyone's having fun in the comments, so that is great. But if people want to surround themselves with community build their own community, put themselves in the position where they can be a super connector, meet great people, add value to their life, and give to others, right? Uh, learn the practice of habitual generosity, as you have talked about, mm -hmm. uh, and be, you know, just, just take all of the self-awareness that they're now going to have after listening to this episode and put it into the practice what would that final piece of advice be for him, Ryan? If you want to meet great people, build new relationships. If you feel like you don't have enough of that opportunity in your life right now, I'll just go back to one of the original pieces of advice that I used to give to people back in the brazen days, which I think is what led to that great opportunity coming to my life. And that is to share your ideas, to make sure that all that good stuff that you're thinking about um, in your brain and you want to do makes its way out into the public eye because you're going to find really, really great people, get a lot of really great inspiration, potentially people you can partner with. That's how I met Penelope and got the opportunity to do brazen with her. Um, and here comes my young child Fisher to say hello as well. So bring um, him in here. Fisher, come on in. He has to go potty. So we're going to have to end shortly, but Fish, you want to say right. hi to everybody? Say, hi, Matt. Matt and I are married now. I now Fisher. have two wives. Fisher, things got really <laughs> weird. Oh, Ryan. I'll help you go potty in a minute, buddy. Ryan, you're the man. This has been a lot of fun. Don't forget about Sandra in the comments who wants a signed copy of your book. Sandra, I got book. you. And uh, got you. everybody, this is Matt Wilson and Ryan Pa. Man and Super Connector. I don't know who's who, but uh, I don't know. check out the book. It's called Super Connector. You guys got that already. Check it out on the Live Different podcast. We are signing off. And uh, <laughs> thank, for every thank you for everybody who listened in, dropped a comment, and engaged with us. And uh, Ryan, you're the man. Have fun with your kids and be safe Thanks, up there Matt. in New England. Talk Thanks, man. Soon, Thanks for everything. I'll see you. Yeah, you got it. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.